Hey YouTube, it's Paul Winter again. You may have already seen my videos about my rooted Samsung Vibrant and my HTC HD2 and other Android devices. Well, today I have just installed the Eugene 373 Vibrant 7 ROM with the uh, Just Another Crowds or JAX 1.2 kernel, 1.2 gigahertz overclock kernel. So let's go ahead and have a little run through with that. Okay, so when you first boot up the phone, you'll be uh, seeing this screen again, same standard lock screen, slide to unlock. So right here is uh, his new choice of launcher called Launcher Plus. Pretty much it, if you've been a very long Android fan and have used any devices uh, such as the G1 and the MyTouch, uh, you might notice this is a lot more like Donut, which it is. I have no clue why he decided to use this launcher. It's called Launcher Plus, but I really don't like it because it's just reminds me of the days I had a G1. That wasn't so great, but I guess because uh, stability purposes he used it. I don't know. He may may or may not remove it in the next build. He's always uh, throwing in builds just to test it all out. So. Uh, but you do have the choice of going back to TW Launcher, which is the original launcher. I went ahead and installed Launcher Pro because I really like it with its uh, customization. But here we'll have to stick with Launcher because this is not a Launcher Pro review. So let's just go ahead and go through with the main parts. So you may have already heard me say, talk about the new 1.2 gigahertz kernel by Jack and pretty much it allows you to clock your um, Samsung Vibrant at a maximum speed of 1.2 gigahertz or uh, 1200 megahertz if you want to call it that so that's a uh, that's a 200 megahertz uh, increase from the normal uh, Samsung Vibrant you can always uh, use the program called set CPU and this will allow you to change and uh, maintain your processor speed at different intervals. What I've done, I've uh, I've basically customized it where, however my, however the phone is acting, such as if I'm charging, I can hit uh, 1.2 gigahertz max or 100 minimum, uh, and when my battery hits 76%, uh, my processor will automatically. Under, uh, clock itself at 1 gigahertz max or 100 minimum and when the screen is off such as right here it'll automatically clock slow itself down to 600 megahertz to 100 megahertz that way it'll help save battery life but you will notice a slight delay in uh, it booting back up as you might see pressed and it took a little bit while you might be, uh, not be able to notice that but uh, I did. Uh, that, but that's one of the main advantages. I have been able to pull down at least one to two hours of uh, extra battery life with moderate texting and uh, some phone calls. And uh, it only has three home screens, which uh, I know the majority of people use more than three home screens and like to have all that option right there. But this does not have any options to change it at all you're stuck with three so and it's really plain I guess if you like the plain look then it's good for you well, I guess you can change it <laughs> yeah you can change it to a maximum of seven so uh, I guess you can customize it but still not that much you can change he disabled the live wallpapers but um, um, many of you might find that a disappointment but Overall, I guess he just did it for the sake of uh, stability purposes and speed. So let's go ahead and do the benchmark. What I uh, with the benchmark uh, it's called Quadrant Standard. So I'll just run this benchmark and it'll automatically do it. So basically, this benchmarker allows you to compare it, your device to other phones out there, such as the Nexus One. Uh, Droid X, all those other high-end phones. 
Um, all I have done is I've installed the 1.2 GHz kernel. I did not install the lag fix. The lag fix is basically a new kernel that allows your phone, it just fixes the lag I guess. And the quadrant score of that almost um, triples the quadrant score of a standard Galaxy S. Standard Galaxy S, Vibrant, Captivate, any of those usually gets about um, 800, 750 to 800, whereas a Vibrant with a lag fix gets about 2200, and a Galaxy S with a 1.2 gigahertz kernel installed as well as a lag fix gets about 2400. So my device is right here. 942. The reason why I didn't install the lag fix is because I did notice a slight sluggishness to it so and I didn't like that sluggishness and a lot of my apps started to slow down such as a uh, doodle jump. I really like to play this in the spare time I have uh, and as I played it I noticed that the little doodle thing just kept jumping up like just skipping frames basically which in this game is bad don't want that and other games such as the Asphalt 5 game right there it's a very high-end game that uses the uh, processor very well it's a little racing game you can download that on the market I recommend it because it's pretty entertaining uh, if you just need to play around, mess around for a couple minutes or so. So. You can choose your car, stuff like that. Don't really. It all just runs magnificently. And even with the 1.2 gigahertz thing, you might notice it's a little bit faster. So let's just go ahead and wait for this. Pretty cool game, if you ask me. Uses it, uses the accelerometer and the graphic capability very well. Let's just quit it. And I downloaded other benchmarkers, Benchmark Pi, if you want to compare it. It basically calculates your Android phone by calculating Pi. I got a score of 20. 2915 milliseconds. I'm not sure how it compares it to your other phones like Quadrant. Or I got a Linpack. I get I usually get about nine. It really depends on how many applications are open still running. So I might get one that's about 8.5, which is really good. Most uh, other phones get about um, about three, four, one of those lower end ones. So I got a 7.367, probably because I still have a lot of apps still open. But anyways, um, everything is still there. Everything works. It's a lot more smoother. You may, uh, some people do prefer the lag fix over the non-lag fix, but I would side with the non-lag fix because Overall, it's more smooth than the lag fix for some odd reason. Probably because it uh, checks your EXT2 partition. That's why it seems a little sluggish at first. So that's uh, one reason why people will say go with the lag fix. It's totally worth it. But I'll just stick with my non-lag fix for now until they are able to make it a seamless experience with no lag. And... Yeah, wireless tether still works. Um, with the root, um, some of you are probably wondering what root is. I probably should have explained it in the beginning of the video. Basically, root allows you to install custom ROMs, uh, which really are good, great for the Android system because some manufacturers like to delay installing new ROMs.
installing updates so the developers are there such as Eugene373 and they create ROMs out there for their personal liking tweak it up and uh, makes it overall faster and when the source code for 2.2 is out I'm pretty sure he will uh, mod it all up and make it look great so that's the end of this review I would I would rate this ROM a 9 out of 10 uh, probably just because um, this launcher this launcher is ugly I would stick with TW launcher if you don't want to use launcher pro TW launcher is still the same standard one and that's a wrap up this is Paul Winters and stay tuned for my other videos that I update very frequently